How's it going, everybody? Level M Diecast, bringing you Diecast Hall, episode 39. This is big O part number two. This haul has been uh, ridiculously big this particular time. Um, typically, I like to keep everything notched together. Um, part one, I did find the other nine pack that had come out. That was the you know Mercedes wagon. Um, if you guys have not seen that, I will link it at the end of the video. Um, but this is the other one. I just happened to find this one today. I didn't realize what the other one was. I had forgot, uh, but it is the Prius, the Toyota Prius. Um, this one is a little different because it actually has a first to market with the Mach-E Taxi. Um, that will be released in single though, so there's really nothing fancy about that particular one. Oh, it opened like, that one opened like perfect. So we'll get the tray out. Pull our Prius out since that is the exclusive. And then we'll just take a look at that. Mach-E since it's in there. Get all that stuff set to the side. So this is the Mach-E. This is uh, going to be in the basic range this year. Um, it just happens to be hitting the 9-pack first to market. So nothing fancy here. Like I said, it's going to be in the main line. So don't worry about it being exclusive to this pack or anything like that. This one will show up in the main line. As far as the 9-pack goes, this is the Toyota Prius. It is the exclusive in this one. It says City Licensed MBX Taxi. Of course, it says Hybrid. There is a QR code on the side, although I don't know if that actually works. I highly doubt it because it doesn't quite look right, but uh, it's there. This Prius does give full tampos on the front, which looks pretty cool. Uh, but unfortunately, no prints on the back. So pretty mundane, just a Toyota Prius. Nothing fancy with that. S13. So these nine packs that are just hitting that now, these things have been made, I don't know, two billion years ago i'm just gonna set this guy right there for now uh one other thing that i meant to put in the part one because i had all the green light stuff in part one uh was this one this is uh from the newest golf release golf special edition series one this is the first generation 1993 dodge ram d350 wrecker there are the other models in the back um i just happened to pick this one up normally i would do the skyline and the gti um, but I am not going to collect the, uh, Skylines or the JDM stuff from Greenlight anymore. So, um, didn't pick that one up. I am still going to collect the, uh, Golfs though. So as soon as I find that Golf, I will pick it up. So we'll pull our package out of here. Pull our W350 or D350. This one's okay. This one's okay. It's a little bit lifted up. Looks looks all right. I do like the front print on it. Looks nice. This one looks pretty good with uh, lifted up because it's a relatively wide casting. Uh, just a added dropped in uh, tow apparatus on the back. Does have some red lights painted on the top. It says Dodge Ram embossed in the actual metal, which is pretty cool. Just a uh, all plastic tow apparatus. Nothing fancy. Orange painted light. That is not a lensed light, unfortunately. Same on the other side, towing collision and recovery, it says. See if this guy is numbered. He is numbered. It is down there at the bottom. 1,005 is the number for this one. So not too shabby. We'll put him on the top since he's a, he's a bigger guy. Since we are on the topic of Dodge trucks, I am working on completing all of the power wagons. Uh, this one is very difficult this one's very difficult to find but this casting is very difficult to get all the versions released they used it for a lot of conventions they used it for a lot of just really you know hard to find stuff expensive to get stuff this is the black and yellow one from the hot wheels garage series uh this was either in or around the case with that uh, yellow porsche that goes for ridiculous money this one is definitely not that expensive uh, but it is quite difficult to obtain uh, I don't know if I'm ever going to crack this one open. I'll probably leave it sealed. But this one is super, super cool. I did not pay that. I, I traded for this, but that's basically what the value is. It's about a $100 car, uh, which is a little ridiculous, but it is what it is. So to get that guy. Uh, got one more from the Garage Series, which isn't as difficult to get. Uh, this one is not as hard to find. 
um, but definitely uh, not super easy either. This is the white and green one. This one looks super cool as well, though. Definitely like that color on that one. This one is significantly cheaper than the other one. But that one is super cool. So we're going to add that guy in the back. But the most expensive one, I think, in my opinion, to obtain is this one. This is the pink party car. I got it loose, but I was able to get the bag. So I do have the bag. So there is the deets for the bag. And of course, this is the one we're talking about. This is the pink power wagon. This one, I, in my opinion, this one is the most difficult one to obtain. Um, it's rarely for sale. Uh, and when it is for sale, people are usually asking in the neighborhood of about 280 plus for one of these uh, sealed. Um, again, I traded a lot of stuff to get my hands on this stuff. Um, so I definitely, uh, definitely ponied up, but at least I didn't have to actually buy it. Um, I'm definitely more, more in line to trade than purchase. I would much rather trade any day of the week, uh, but just absolutely fantastic. So this model was on display, so it was quite dusty. It was a little dirty, um, so I haven't really gone through and cleaned it up. I want to make sure that I clean it with something proper. I don't want to blemish the uh, pink Spectra Flames on there because it's a big, big deal. So we'll let's see that guy will not fit in there. So I guess we'll just put him on the top. It's just kind of out of the way. Uh, speaking of more Hot Wheels uh, premium stuff, uh, Elite 64, I could not wait to crack this open. So I already cracked open the Mustang. This is the Mustang right here. I think this might be the best Elite 64 released thus far. I know we don't have that many of them, but this one is absolutely fantastic. It's just, it's a super heavy weight. It's very, very heavy, very detailed. I love the wheels. The wheels look fantastic. Nice slicks. It's ultra, ultra wide. Super wide. I just love the stance of it. Prints are fantastic. Everything looks good about it. Details in the back window. Because, of course, it's a race car. There is a really nice interior in there with a blue roll cage. There's even some netting and stuff like that in there. And then, of course, the most important part of the model itself is, of course, the fact that the hood is removable. And then you do have your twin turbo V8 in there. Couldn't tell you what exactly it is, but it is a twin turbo V8. Um, the plastic is extremely detailed um, on the gray part, but uh, the black chrome part is uh, also extremely detailed. But the problem is, is, I mean, it's without any other colors in there, it just really takes away from all the detail. Like, like the molding itself has a lot of detail. You can even see all the fan uh details behind the radiator and the radiator does sit at an angle which is pretty cool of course to fit it in there and then of course if you look at the hood piece the vent parts in there are open the little nostril areas are open for intakes which go directly to the turbo intakes a little bit of print on the top of the hood in black nothing fancy with the bottom of the hood so it does just slide in in the back there two little notches and then you just push down a little snap and there you go very very nice that's that's definitely my favorite elite 64 thus far might be the best one ever who knows i don't know who knows we're gonna see all right moving on to more stuff um i found a couple of hot wheels basics today which was very weird um so again this was you know unfortunately not part of the first haul because this this second haul was supposed to be all premium stuff um, but i did pick up a couple red editions first time i've seen red editions in uh i don't know two million years i think uh which is good because it's two castings i collect of course with the 82 seville and kind of a pearl white with some red burgundy on the side and of course red interior does say red right there red on both sides so that guy is not too shabby we'll throw him up in there and then the other one is the Audi, 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 uh, Audi RS e-tron GT in black. Red edition just makes it red with a little bit of striping uh, on the wheels. That's the only thing that makes it red. I don't think it says red anywhere else. Actually, it does. I think it says, there we go. 
It says red right at the back, right, right there. It says red. But full prints on the back. Nothing, you know, fancy about this particular casting, this model. Just red edition, black with the red. So we'll throw that guy up there. Looks pretty good. Definitely like that one for sure. All right, so word on the street is is this pack is pretty rare. Um, I couldn't tell you. I, I don't, I'm not really sure. Um, somebody also told me that this exclusive to this three pack or can't find that portion anywhere else. Um, I bought it specifically just for this port. Actually, I traded for it. I didn't buy it. I traded for it. Um, but it's also got this Cayman in here too. And then there's a, there's a, I think that's a Falcon or a GTO. It's a GTO at the bottom. So I'm not sure if this is rare. not sure if it's hard to find. Does, I don't really care. Um, I traded for it because I wanted the Porsche. That one in a satin green. So pull that guy out. A little, little blemished right out of the package. But it is what it is. Does have full prints on the front, which looks fantastic. I love the uh, matte kind of wrinkle finish to the green. Looks good. Black PR5 is on there. No prints on the back. Does have the uh, metal wing though. Roll cage and stuff in there. And there is your base deets. This is from K23. So quite a few years ago. But I'm happy to add that one. So we'll put him there. And then the other one that we'll probably just add. Just because it's another Porsche. Even though it's an ugly Porsche. Uh, this is the Cayman. Porsche Cayman S. So we'll throw that in the mix. Just because it's Porsche. Other than that, like I said, I don't, I don't particularly care. Uh, and then the last one is just a GTO, which will go on to somebody else. Definitely won't stay in the collection here at Level M for sure. Uh, one more basic. Uh, picked this up as well. Just uh, a Ram I didn't have, Skyjacker. I have the white one, and there's a red edition. I didn't have this black one. So got lucky enough to find one more. This is modified casting. Doesn't have the boombox crap in the back or nothing like that. So. Pretty cool. This guy's going to have to go on the top for sure because he's it's too big. It's way too big. Probably doesn't really show up in the camera very well. All right, moving on to a ridiculous amount of Hot Wheels Premium. Ridiculous amount. Uh, first one we're going to start with, Hot Wheels Boulevard Old School Porsche 914-6. Very difficult to find uh, version here in orange. Um, I do have the green one that came in the uh, box set. That one was very difficult to get. Um, this one is also very difficult to get. So this one, valued at 30 bucks. I did trade for this guy. There is a sampling of the mix of some other models that were in the in the batch. Of course, all the way from 2011 Mattel. Cracking that guy open. To put him up in the display, says 72 on there. Like the details. A couple of driver names on there. Could be the designers. Who knows? Prints on the back look pretty good. I like the wheel choice with the chrome ring and just the red hub color itself. Nice base deets. E19, I think, is the day code. E19, something like that. So, trio of Porsches going on right there. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out something to do with that, uh, that Prius. All right, moving on to another Boulevard. This is one that I've been looking for for quite some time. Um, I do, uh, I'm very, very close to completing every version of that's ever been released for this caravan. Um, so this was definitely one of the uh, harder ones to find. It's not particularly expensive, you know, 15 bucks was the asking price. I traded for this one as well. Um, but I was just really, really wanting to get this one. There is the mix for this one. Nothing fancy on there. Go ahead and crack that guy open. I do like the wheel choice, although it's a bit a bit too much chrome i think uh maybe maybe a different color would have been a better fit but it's it's huge compared to the casting itself um they did have to modify the casting uh for this version here which i thought was interesting so you see there's 2020 or 2012 uh copyright date on there because this casting was modified became a hook assembly which this one looks pretty good super tinted windows does have an interior Red line tires. I don't like the fact that they use the Chrysler grill. Um, they did not use the Dodge hashtag grill or the hash cross hash grill. Um, that's the Chrysler's grill version. So not really sure why they decided to do that on, you know, it's supposed to be Dodge Caravan. So whatevs. 
Uh, Wayne's Garage, uh, just the shoebox. Again, another casting I collect, just trying to hunt them all down. Trying to complete those. There is the mix of these on the back. Of course, all these uh, Wayne's and Larry garages were uh, definitely not something that would survive in today's uh, climate. Because they were mostly muscle cars and stuff like that. There is the shoebox. does have that you know steely wheel that they used. Ridiculous amount. Uh, this has flames on the side in silver and red. Silver painted roof looks good. Chrome interior on this one. No front or rear tampos, unfortunately. But it does have a metal base. So, pretty nice. Again, just a casting I've been collecting. I have, I don't know, like maybe 40 different versions of the shoebox. Uh, Hot Wheels Hall of Flame. Hall of Fame. Um, it's a flame, but this one's Hall of Fame. Uh, this is the Dodge Viper RT10. Robert Lutz, of course. This one comes with a little collector card and all that crazy stuff like that. Nothing fancy here. Just another casting I collect. Of course, Hot Wheels has finally replaced this Viper casting. Um, it either comes out in the in case. I'm sorry. It comes out in the um, P case or the Q case. One of the two. P or Q. Might be the Q case. Uh, this is the Viper. Does have some really, really nice, uh, you know, candy red paint on there. Uh, no prints on the actual taillights, but does have like... Uh, Prints for the plate and the turn signals and stuff. Big five-spoke chrome real riders. I think it looks okay on this casting, but not particularly good um, on, on overall look. Prints on the front look pretty good. Uh, plastic base on these. Nothing fancy with those. Made in Thailand. So throw that guy up there. All right, moving on to some older um, premium stuff. Um, a lot of stuff from past pop culture type mixes um i'm gonna have a lot of these just giving you guys a heads up so smoke and grill i've always liked this casting um and i came across a lot of uh, premiums for cheap so that's why you guys have been seeing me pick up a lot of these premiums so i decided to go ahead and start collecting the casting since i could get these for super cheap this one is fruit brute fruit cereal so we'll go ahead and crack this guy. I think this casting's only been used four times, and I think I got all four of the castings that has been done thus far. I do like the wheel choice on this one. Kind of the six spoke looks pretty good. Um, you know, has the food details and stuff in there. Of course, a big, huge engine on the front. Not a licensed casting. This is a Hot Wheels version casting, but it looks fantastic. You can see all the race detail. The driver's seat on the one side. All that detail in there. The food on the side is you know, potentially real. Potentially real. See the driver's side in there. And then, of course, this side is all covered up. All metal. Metal base. This is G29. So, I'll give you an idea of how old that was. Of course, pops a wheelie. Just a little bit. But the wheelie bar catches it. So, that's kind of cool. So, I'll see if that guy... Nope, it does not fit. Ooh, don't want to drop that. So we'll stick our Prius up there. I don't think he'll fit in there either. Nope, he's not going to fit in there either. So we're going to put that guy right there. All right, another version here is in Almond Joy. This is from the Hershey's mix, that ridiculously large mix that had 10 cars in it, which they don't do anymore. But I still think it'd be cool to have a 10 car car culture mix release. That would be awesome. There is your Almond Joy. I do like the wheel on this one much, much better. White interior, blue window, a little bit easier to see down in the details there with the steering and the, you know, where the driver would sit. It does say Almond Joy on the wing, which looks pretty good. This is a pretty cool casting. No prints on the back, which is ridiculous because this is a premium. Uh, a little bit of print on the front, though, with the headlights, but that's it. And then just a giant Almond Joy on that side. See if we got base deets. Right there, it's printed the opposite of the base. It is D40. So that one came before the Brute Fruit. Another food-related one, of course, because it is a food truck, uh, M&M's. There is the mix for this particular one there. Could care less about all the castings in there except for this one. And uh, for the longest time, I didn't care about any castings in this mix. But I decided to start collecting this one because I think it's kind of cool. This has the same wheels as previous. There's the big giant M&Ms on that side. Tan window on this one with kind of an off-white uh, interior. 
So same prints on the front, just a little bit of headlight print. But this one gets full print on the back, which is cool. Definitely like that. So budget must have increased a little bit. Uh, date code on this one is F40, as in Ferrari F40. So put that one there. All right, the last one that I think they ever did was for the Who, uh, which is right here. This is the mix right there. They don't tell you the mix. That's all you get. Uh, day code, though, on this one, F19. So pull this guy out in all his ridiculously British glory. Giant British flag on that side. That looks super cool. I like that. Very, very cool. Uh, red line tires, different kind of wheel. Very, very cool. like that they changed up the wheel. Says the who on the back. Tail light prints look good. Silver interior. Not too shabby. Red window. Prints on the front as well. That's pretty cool. That's definitely the best version of them all. Definitely the best version. All right. Um, I got one newer car culture right here in the mix. Right in the middle. We're going to split these up. This is from uh, Drag Strip Demons. I have pieced together that whole set. I didn't originally want the set, um, but I just happened to just piece it together. So this is the last one I needed was the gasser. Um, not exactly a cheap um, car culture one, but not expensive either. I think I got it for like 10 bucks. So 10 bucks is not, not bad. It says Firestone on the big slicks on the back. It says try me on there. I do like the green color, blue window. Very, very cool prints on the top. Kind of a sparkling, you know, kind of a, kind of a sparkling star kind of look to it. Prints on the front look good. Of course, the casting's been changed since this one. They don't have that ugly post there anymore. The post has been moved back, I believe. This one looks pretty cool, though. Definitely like that. Glad to add this. Put this in the race car display. L38 is your base code. So there you go. This guy will definitely fit in there. So we will put that guy in there. All right, I got some of these uh, Baja Breakers, uh, another casting I collect. You guys will notice as you watch my hauls, there's certain castings I just collect, I just do. Uh, that T1 panel bus is a pretty difficult piece to obtain. Um, other than that, other everything in here I don't really care for. I'll probably get that Chrysler Airflow at some point in time just because it's, uh, you know, it's Chrysler, it's Mopar-ish. Um, but other than that, just the Baja Breaker, which is this guy here. From the Muppets show, there has been two different Muppet releases. Um, so I do have another Baja Breaker because we did another Muppet release. This guy has orange line tires on those mutters. Looks pretty cool. The scientist in Beaker. I forget what that guy's name is. but A little bit of prints for the roof rack on the top, which looks pretty good. Orange interior on this one. Of course, prints on the back. There is the prints on the other side. They are different side to side, which is always good. We like that. Flat black uh, base. This is Hot Wheels 2022. G34 is the date code. So that one is kind of cool. A guy barely fits in there. Barely fits in there. All right, another release of the Muppets. There is this particular release. Again, I don't care for any of the castings on here except for this one. E49 is the day code stamped on there. Of course, this is Gonzo. So, I'll crack Gonzo out. There is Gonzo done up for plumbing services. He's got his plunger there. The great Gonzo. It says discount for chickens. So, very interesting. Radio dispatched, of course. Uh, red line tires on this one. Not orange, but red. Um, and then a little bit of print on the top for the roof rack. Then does say Gonzo Plumbing. No prints on the front. Does get prints on the back. And then this one, E48, is your date code. So that Baja Breaker dates back uh, all the way from the Blackwall era. Heavily modified for the new versions, though. Uh, last one we got here. This is Star Trek. Last Baja Breaker. We still have more stuff to crack. There is this mix here. Don't think this T1 panel bus is as difficult to obtain, but probably still desirable because everybody just goes ape, 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 apeness over the, um, look at that. It's got extra tape on there. See that? Extra tape on the blister. Doesn't look like it popped off the blister or nothing. Maybe that's, 
factory. Oh, there's tape on the bottom too. Very weird. Very interesting. Hmm, interesting. All right, there is our Star Trek. I forget that guy's name because I'm not a I'm not a Trekkie, not a Trekkie. Uh, same wheels again. Unfortunately, no print on the top for the rack this time. Do have a little bit of print on the front for the headlights. There is the other guy. Forget his name. Forget his name. I'm sure somebody's a Trekkie and they can drop a name down there. Star Trek on the back. A little bit of prints looks pretty good. Gloss black painted base. H48 is the date code. So we'll put him down here at the bottom. Slide him in the slot. All right. I picked up a couple more of these castings because I already had two. And I feel like I might as well just start collecting these ones as well. This is the Astro Van, the 85 Astro Van uh, drag van, basically. Uh, Mike and Ike for this particular mix. There's the mix on the back. Looks very, very good. I do have uh, one more from this mix that we will crack. Um, but we won't crack it until we get done with the Astros. But I do have one more from this mix. So we'll go ahead and pull out our Mike and Ike Chevy Astro Van. Now one of the things that bothers me in my collection is I really don't like when there's like one model. Um, and there's like no accompanying models. So I do have two Astro Vans. So I just figured I'd pick up some more. Again, I got these for super cheap. No prints or anything on the front or the back of this one. Just prints on the side. And then white top, I do like this one a lot. I really wish it opened up, but it unfortunately doesn't. But it would be really cool. There's the laundry in the back. This guy, not much of a uh, popping wheelies, but you can pop a wheelie. All right, Star Wars version. This is, of course, Han Solo. There is this particular mix on the back. You know, I did a video about that hauling gas the other day, and... Um, Thought about getting this, and now I got it, so there we go. So I think the only one I may pursue, maybe that XGW van, because I already have some of those as well. So I might pursue that one. That, that one's definitely not a uh, desirable casting. So get this guy out of there. He has the GT wheels, which I think look fantastic. Way better than the five spokes that were on the Mike and Ike. No prints on the back. Some dual uh, gray stripes on the top. It's kind of a primer color. There is a little bit of print on the headlights for this one, which looks super cool. Red line tires as well. I do like that casting. It's pretty heavy too. Nice, nice heavyweight. All right, last Astro Van we got, of course, a more Star Wars. It says Stet the Trap, Defend the Death Star. There is the mix on the back. Of course, I have the Unimog because I love the Unimog. It's awesome casting. So that's the only one I had picked up from this set, but now I have this Astro Van, and of course there is a uh, XGW Van in there, should I choose to pursue that one as well. So, see what happens. So, pull this guy out. There is the Deets. Of course, that is a Wookiee. Well, that's the uh, Speed Driver, I'm sorry, not the Wookiee. Looks kind of weird. I knew that was the Speeder right there, but and then there's your um, Republic logo, I think. This one looks pretty good with the black five spokes. I think that looks pretty cool. Kind of a sinister look to it a little bit. There's the prints on the front with a little bit of print for the headlights, which are a little crooked, not too bad. No prints on the back, um, except for it does say copyright Lucas Films Limited. So they they put some print on it. I mean, if you're printing the back of it, you might as well just put taillight prints on it, in my opinion. All right, the other model from that mix that we talked about before, of course, Hot Tamales Long Gone. Same mix as the Mike and Ike Astro. Uh, this one is definitely not a $5 premium. <laughs> definitely not a $10 premium. This is more of a $15 to $20 premium. Just because it's a truck, it's the Long Gone. I love the uh, wheel that's on this one. The kind of deep five spoke looks fantastic. Truck has a very, very interesting rake. Prints on the front look fantastic. Flat black base. This guy also dates all the way back to the Blackwall era. Get fired up, it says. There is the base deets. Looks like uh, maybe E or F 52. 
1982 and 2011 Mattel when they updated the casting. So we'll stick him maybe right there. Maybe right there. All right, a couple more premiums uh, for the uh, 38 Dodge Airflow from Star Trek. Of course, this is another casting. I only have like one or two in the mix, so I figured I will scoop up some more. Uh, I do have the Jeep Wagoneer because that's super cool casting. So the rest of those I I don't care for. So we'll go ahead and pull this guy out. This is Spock. Spock hanging out there. There is your Star Trek logo. There's a shuttle on there. It's all right. It's all right. I like the casting. It's this this deco is not good though. It's a Star Trek on the back in old school Star Trek. There he is on this side. Let's see what it says there. It says, "I'm a doctor, not a bricklayer." So blue interior, very weird blue interior, very weird. G06 is the date code on this one. 2012 Mattel when that guy debutted. Uh, one more of those 38 Dodge Airflows. This one is for Supergirl or DC Comics. There is the particular mix there. Again, could care less except for maybe that XGW. So this helps me figure out if I want to pursue that casting, see which ones I got to hunt down. So pull this guy out. There is Supergirl. Does have that same old steely uh, real rider. I really hate that wheel. Hate that wheel with passion. Uh, this one with a giant red line on the tire. This one's a pretty cool deco, you know, red, white, and blue. So it's super cool. Some prints on the top. Of course, it says Supergirl on the back. This one has a gray interior. Kind of hard to see in there, but there is a gray interior in there. And then your day code is E26. E28. E28. All right, rolling it out. We got one single more item to go. This was kind of an interesting pickup. Um, I did pick this up from Hobby Lobby, uh, which is interesting. Um, I picked this up because that's a new casting. Um, that is a Ford Super Duty Dually, um, which is interesting. So this is Maesto Heartland Haulers. I don't even know where these are sold. Um, I mean, this the, the normal branded Maesto stuff is really hard to find. But again, at Hobby Lobby for $5.99, uh, probably a little bit more expensive than it really should be. But um, I mean, six bucks really isn't that big deal. It's really not that big a deal. Comes with the uh, travel trailer. This is a camper trailer. It says Ford Performance on the back. Very, very high quality prints on there. Very high quality. Does have a silhouette of a GT. No prints on the back. Giant one on this side because there's way less, you know, windows, no doors, no nothing like that. So they supersize the prints. This thing is screwed together. Does have rubber tires, but um, the entire thing is plastic. The entire trailer is plastic. All right, here is our Super Duty. Uh, this is a brand new casting from uh, Maesto. Uh, this looks okay. So... It's the very interesting casting. I highly doubt there's an interior in there. I can guarantee you there's not going to be an interior in there because that's just what Maesto does. Why they didn't try some kind of mirrors on the side, I'm not sure. Um, why there's no door handle detail for the rear door, I'm not sure. But the stance looks pretty good. It does have nice wide fenders for the bed here because, of course, it has a real dually. It has an actual dually um, with actual two tires now, the inner tire is just a faux print, so they didn't even put a uh, tread pattern on it, but it is a separate tire, which is kind of interesting. Just says Ford Super Duty. This is riveted together. Comes with a tow hitch in the back. Tail lights are printed up. Says Ford. Looks pretty good. It is done up for a uh, gooseneck, gooseneck hitch as well, because they do have some of those in the Heartland haulers. So this guy would just go on there. Um, and that actually looks pretty good. So just to give you guys a heads up on how big this is, cause it's, it's, it's a big casting. Um, I mean, you can just look at it, how the size comparison is to like every other thing here, even that big Ram up there 
Um, this thing is just enormous. It's really, really big. But it's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, Maesto's been trying some different stuff. Um, not really sure if it's really going to work out for them all well. But uh, they've been trying some different stuff. So just wanted to showcase that because I thought it was pretty cool. And again, I just picked that one up today. So pretty happy about that. So there you go. That is part two of the diecast haul. Um, sorry I couldn't fit it all in one video. But uh, that first video was like 45 minutes long. It was ridiculous. And this video is almost as long. So we're going to roll out. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Drop a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. As always, you guys are awesome. Level in. Peace.